Welcome folks to Rocky Mountain Rap Rap Festival 2024. It is beginning of day two before the madness ensues. I wanna show you folks around this show and just check out some of the cool projects and smaller products that I saw that maybe don't warrant a full dedicated video, but I still want you folks to have a chance to see. Thank you to LDO Motors for not only sponsoring my trip to the show, but this video. That if it was not for them, I wouldn't be here. And I don't think that 3D printing would be where it is today if it wasn't for the high quality motors, components, PCBs, and kits that they provide and put out there. Maybe that's self-serving to say, but I really do think they are an excellent friend to the 3D printing community. Find a link to them in the description. Now let's go see what there is to see at Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival 2024. And we might as well start by talking with the folks at LDO Motors. They've got a handful of the new USB interface boards. So instead of CAN, you get a much more reliable USB signal interface with 24 volt power supply. And then of course your power or data cables or USB data cable. <laughs> your USB data cable back to your SBC for your system. This is the new Orbiter 2 board that is coming hopefully in May. Go, of course, go with your Orbiter 2 extruder assembly and obviously purpose made to fit on there. And if nothing else, it has a nice clean look to it and a purpose made heat sink rather than just sticking these random heat sinks we get for Raspberry Pis or something all over our boards. The EBB36 version of the USB board as well. Once again, RP2040 processor and a TMC2209 driver. I'm really interested in this, try to get something a little more reliable. My CAN board that I'm running on my Mercury One with an uh, EBB36 is just not working out right now. So something like this might be a little bit faster and more reliable than the CAN configuration madness. Yeah, Nighthawk 36. Nighthawk 36. Yeah. And the Revo Roto version as well. I have to get around to actually using the Revo Roto I have, but this looks like a nice clean installation of a USB connection tool board for that as well. This one is TBD, but coming pretty darn soon to the folks at E3D. Onward we go. We're here with Swiss 3DC, and they've got a new type of rapid change nozzle system with no screwing things in or anything like that. Very low thermal conduction, very small heat break tube, very low heat creep. So the best area can have for such a device. DHP hot side system here, which sandwiches the nozzle in between of a pair of copper heat blocks. We've got the flat ceramic heater element on one side, or it can accept two yeah. for yeah. dual-sided heating in the higher maybe engineering applications, or if you're trying to push flow a little bit, though I don't find heater elements help flow too much, yeah, but they will help maintain flow on your higher demand applications. There's gonna be a range of heatsink adapters, like right here in my hand, I've got the Revo Voron, and this has about a 22.5 millimeter long melt zone on it. There's applications like the Prusa Mini, where you're taking from the V6 style heat block with a 12 millimeter heat zone, all the way up to a 22 and a half millimeter heater melt zone. So this is a really interesting and different take on a rapid nozzle changing system. Five, six second nozzle changes without having to even break out a hex wrench to change out anything. There's also a bamboo adapter setup. They're looking to have as many options for you folks as they can to fit to different heat sinks for your application and whatever machine you may, might be trying to fit this onto. Coming soon from the folks at Swiss 3DC. Oh, hi. So I'm here with the folks with the Beacon Eddy Current bed scanner system. So a lot of folks are familiar with this. Rapid scanning, get a lot of data points across your bed for a really fine mesh, but do it quickly. You're not having to probe over and over again. You can just rapidly scan. A lot of people have been asking me to put these onto one of my builds, and I've just held off because I love the ability to have Z auto Z offset with clicky probe on my machines, where I don't ever have to dial in my Z offset. That all gets handled by macros in software. Well. 
that is coming to Beacon Probe now. They're adding soon with existing hardware, the ability to auto Z offset. So you're not gonna have to be dialing things in with paper and worrying about it. You can change out bed surfaces. Like we just showed, you could put a piece of glass under there and it's still gonna know where Z zero is so you can get a good consistent first layer every single time. So coming soon, we said May. It's gonna come out in May. So for all existing models. Awesome, so existing users who already have a Beacon Probe, new customers who pick one up, coming in May, you'll have that added on. So improving the products they've already released. Love to see it. This feels wrong. I recognize I that guy. Me how I'm I don't gonna know where from. Two of those, so I might as well walk you out. All right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> You're good? All right. In three, two, one. Okay. Lyman. Oh. Lyman. Lyman. It's going. Oh, it's going. Oh, it's flashing. Uh, what is it? 600. 70 good. game. I'll show you. <laughs> Alan's about to play here. All right. Let's see how bad I do with this. Am. Okay. You've heard the spiel, but I'm going to tell you. The game is removing this from the table as fast as you can. Already then? And you don't want to twist it or turn it or roll it. So you want to go straight up. Yeah, straight up and you want to stop. Okay. So you don't have to go back down. And I invite you to tell me when you're ready and I'll hit the button. I don't know if I'm ever going to be ready, so let's go with it. All right. At the end of my countdown, it's at your leisure. Alan, in three, two, one. That was pretty good. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Oh, awesome. 19,000 points. It's not leaderboard, but it's within reach. It is getting there, so let's give it another go. I love hearing that. All right, I'm going to hit that button, count you down, and you know what to do. Alan, in three, two, one. Good. Right. I don't think it was better. It's a good roll. It's going good. Oh! oh. Million. Uh, what? what? One million. Alan, that puts you at a solid number four. I beat yes. this one. That's what matters. That's all that matters. <laughs> all that matters. You want to that? Now we're over here with uh, the Hedgehog himself with the stealth changers that they have on display here. Two 2.4s and a Micron stealth changer. So tool changing on a Voron for lower material wastes multi-color printing, multi-material printing, theoretically, and absolutely gorgeous printing. Every time I go live lately, somebody asked me when I'm going to build a, tool, a stealth changer, a tap changer, I'm not going to anytime soon. But if you want to see more about these things, check out this guy. Uh, what is your Twitch? Zombie Hedgehog, right? Zombie Hedgehog on Twitch, Hedgehog Makes on YouTube. So there you go, Zombie Hedgehog on Twitch and Hedgehog Makes on YouTube. Check them out so you can see more of these fun projects. We are here with Slice Engineering at Rocky Mountain Rep Rep 2024, and they have something new in the open source vein coming soon. I'm gonna let Peyton tell you about it. We're super excited. We have something big coming soon, and it's going to be called Mako. It's our brand new hot end. It'll be coming this summer, and it's going to be available for the X1 and P1 series of Bamboo Lab printers. We're super excited. It's going to unlock interchangeable nozzles uh, one-handed nozzle changes, it's going to have improved flow rate, that's super exciting. Uh, and the thing that's going to be super cool is it's going to introduce a new open source nozzle standard to the market that we are working with other nozzle manufacturers and we would love to collaborate with any nozzle manufacturers who want to create nozzles for Mako or future hot ends. Uh, we want to show you the drawings, we're super excited about it and it's going to be really cool. We'll give more details in the coming weeks if you want to learn more. Uh, we have cool QR code and I can give Alan the link to that as well. So we're pumped. It's going to be coming this summer. And it's going to be super, super awesome. Definitely look out to hear more about Mako from myself, from Slice Engineering. And as Peyton said, I will drop a link in the description to where you can start to see more information as it comes out on Slice Engineering's Mako. Look out for more.
Sure, why not? Now that things are calming down a little bit, at the end of the show here, I'm gonna stop by and talk about these kind of crazy engineering machines here. We've got the cross gantry eight motor drive system. We're not talking all wheel drive, we're talking octo drive. I guess technically it is kind of all wheel drive on a cross gantry, whatever, it doesn't matter. They've seen upwards of 200,000 acceleration. Like I, I can't even get that word out because it's just so fast. Over 200,000 they've seen come out of this thing. They are printing today here at the show at I believe 60,000 millimeters uh, acceleration at upwards of like 500 millimeters because of some flow extrusion issues that they're running into. Consistent 40 millimeter cubic out of a tube, right? Yes. Yeah. Tube, basel, and compressed air cooling. Crest, compressed air cooling, which is also, I believe, an oil bath pump that's wicked quiet. You can't tell based off all the noise in the show, but this thing is just absolutely wild to see. It's got a machined steel top plate for the mounting of the gantry system to keep everything as rigid as you need at those types of speeds and accelerations, and it's just wild to see. Next to the eight motor system, we have Flycron. Flycron is a legit flying gantry setup, which is basically, a, not really, but a, a drone for your gantry setup. It's got linear rails, it is constrained, it is controlled, but it is using lift motors to actually fly the gantry. So I guess you're not gonna have to worry about any belt issues causing some VFAs on your print. You're just gonna have to worry about a draft or uh, the air currents causing issues. If I had hair, it'd be blowing in the wind right now. I are seeing decent print quality out of it for what it is. It's a fun tech demo, I would say. Uh, not something you're gonna be running in your bedroom, that's for darn sure. We saw decibel levels upwards of 100 dBA out of this thing. So, a really fun project. These folks are really having some fun with pushing some engineering and some ideas of 3D printing and just going silly and crazy with it. The Flycron also has all-wheel drive with some NEMA 14s on there, getting lighter weight while still having all-wheel drive for your lifting setup. Really neat stuff. I'm gonna throw a link in the description to the Discord for these folks so you can check out these projects if you wanna know more. I forgot to mention earlier that the flying gantry design is actually running on 220 because they need that much power to keep it up and going. And uh, then they turned it up to 11 and went to full 100% power on the motors as they had not done at all today. And this is what happened. End of the show, getting around to the final last couple things while they're packing up. The folks at Micro Swiss have their new Flow Tech hot end for the folks who have Elegoo Neptune 4 and Neptune 4 Pro machines. Improved flow rates, higher quality, better heat separation, all around an improvement. They've been seeing improvements on the Creality K series, the Ender 3 V3s, and now you're gonna see it on Elegoo Neptune 4 and Neptune 4 Pros as well. Check out, link in the description to check out more about this thing. It, it's the product that I'm most intrigued by them launching recently. I don't have that many Creality's anymore. I also don't have a Neptune 4 at the moment either, but you know what, hey, I think it's cool to see this company constantly improving and putting out new products. And they also, for the folks who already have the Flowtech hot ends in your Creality's or you put it in your Elegoo Neptune 4's, they are now working with Diamondback on a Diamondback nozzle to fit in there. So you can get the ultra wear resistance with one of their Flowtech hot ends now. Check it out, link in the description. This show is so much, I have not had a chance to film nearly enough. I'm barely scratching the surface of it, but there's more to see, let's go. It's the very end of the show. We got Sanity with the Boron team here. And in the Boron booth, we have the new Cascade, Boron CNC. So not a lot of information about this just yet. It's coming later this year, but they are working on it, starting to work on documentation, starting to work on getting the final bomb together for a CNC machine. It looks 
kind of like a 3018, a router setup, but this thing is intended to mill aluminum. Maybe harder stuff, not sure yet, but a real milling machine from the Voron team. And actually now that I just had a chance to talk for a second here, they have now officially milled mild steel on Cascade. Just the preliminary testing happened here at Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival, but it has been done. So the potential is really interesting for where this could go. So much fun going on here. I'm sure I missed a ton of stuff. Check out all the content you can find from Rocky Mountain Rep Rap 2024 because there was a lot of really cool stuff here and I only scratched the surface of it in this video. Thank you again to our sponsor, LDO Motors, for sponsoring my trip to the show. Let's get to the insanity that is packing up around here now. Thanks for checking this out, folks, and be sure to check out all the other videos. I have a couple of dedicated ones, like on the Rat Rig V Core 4, and one on the Big Tree Tech booth and a bunch of new products that they have as well.